This is the last model from Gearbest family of 3D printers. The Alpha Wise U30, which is another very low cost printer, but decent quality at the same time. In a previous video we have seen the U20, which has the size of a CR10. Today I will make a quick review over the U30, which is smaller, same size as the Ender 3 from Creality. I will make an unbox, we will see how to assemble this printer and get it started, make a few prints, see the main features this new model has and give my opinion as well. We have very low price, very compact frame and made out of metal, smooth rods for all the axes, Bowden extruder and filament detector, both glass and also rough surface printing bed, 24 volts power supply so faster heating, a touchscreen display and much more, so this printer promised a lot, so let's see if that's true. But before we start make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for future videos. Also thanks to all my patrons for the support. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. As always you receive the printer in a cardboard box and everything is well protected inside using some of that white foam. Ok so I open the box and we can see that we have just a big pack of parts for the printer and we will have to assemble it. I take out from the box the entire pack of parts and let's see what we have. We start with the user guide where we can see all the parts that we have and how to mount the entire printer step by step. Then we have the heated bed wrapped in some plastic foil. Then we have two metal bars and the touchscreen display. Then we have the metal spool holder, a metal bracket and some belt for the axis movement and now we can go to the next level. I remove the foam separation and below we have the entire main body of the printer, already assembled. I take out that frame and as you can see it is basically the entire lower part of the printer. The power supply is already mounted, the heated bed carriage and the extruder block as well and the case of electronics below the frame. Ok so what we have more is the Z axis carriage with the extruder motor, the motor for the Z axis, the lead screw and two more metal bars. We also have some plastic bags with the lead screw coupler, the belt tensioner for the X axis, screws and knobs for the heated bed, an end stop module and the SD card. So this is basically all that we have inside of the case when you receive this printer. The bottom part of the frame, the Z carriage and the extruder motor, the lead screw and metal bars, the heated bed and a few more parts, so it's time to assemble all these components and give the shape to this printer. Follow the steps in the user guide and in a few minutes you will have the printer assembled. First we mount the vertical bars for the upper part of the printer, with just 4 screws on the bottom of the printer. Now that we have the vertical bars, we go to the next part which is adding a metal bar to the Z-axis carriage like this. Now we roll the extruder carriage on that metal bar and after that we can add the other side of the Z-axis carriage with the rollers. On the other side of the metal bar we add the belt tensioner and the X-axis frame is ready. It's time to add the belt and we do that with some zip ties. Ok so now that the X-axis part is ready, we roll it down to the vertical bars of the printer. Next we put the top metal bar and the body is almost ready. I add the Z-axis step motor in place, I fit in the lead screw coupler and then I add the lead screw and tie that in place with the coupler screws. I add the spool holder on top of the printer and it's time to add the heated bed. First you have to remove the printing glass. Now we have the screws and plastic knobs. Add a screw, a spring and a plastic knob like this for each corner and tie that but not fully tight. Now we can add back the printing glass. I screen place the touchscreen display and the body of the printer is ready. All is there to do is to plug the connectors. I had to remove the screen because I wasn't able to plug its connector while it is on the printer frame. The connector is quite fragile. Ok so I screw back the display. I connect all the step motor connectors and the end stops. Each connector has a label, so you can't get them wrong. I also plug in the heated bed cable and the teflon tube for the extruder and the printer is ready for the first test. Plug in the power cable and I start this printer for the first time. I've completed the assemble in less than 20 minutes. So first thing first I have to level the bed. I will do that with the old school sheet of paper. 
For that, go in the menu to Leveling and select the first corner and place the paper below the nozzle tip. Tie the plastic knob of the heated bed till the nozzle is gently touching the paper and do that for all the corners. So now the bed is leveled and I can go and select Preheat PLA. I get a spool of blue PLA and I insert that into the extruder till some filament will come out of the nozzle. Now I place a Benchy G-code file on this SD card and I plug that into the SD card slot. Select files on the screen and open the Benchy file and the printer starts the first print with no problems. I am printing in less than 30 minutes. Ok, but before we see the test results, let's talk about what this printer has. First of all, the printing specs. It has a printing area of 220 by 220 mm and a height of 250 mm. It uses by default the 0.4 mm nozzle and 1.75 mm filament. From what I know, the AlphaWise firmware is not open source yet, but the entire team does their best to keep it updated. Before we go into more details, I would like to say some parts that I don't like about this printer. It's nice to have the display as a module, so we could put it on any side of the printer that we want. But the connection cable is awful. It seems so fragile and to plug it into the screen, I almost break the connector. And if you break this type of connector, there is not much to do about it. Just buy a new cable or a new screen. Another strange thing about this printer is that the SD card input is on the back of the printer. That's a little bit uncomfortable, especially if you have the printer placed against the wall. You would have to rotate the printer in order to see where to plug the SD card. Having the USB cable on the back is not a problem, but the SD card should be on front, or at least on the side of the printer. Ok, now for the good parts. First of all, the most important part is the price. Right now only 150 euros, and we have metal frame, the touchscreen and all the good stuff for this low price. The price is even lower than the Creality Ender 3. Ok, now this printer has a power resume option and also a filament detection, so your print process should be safe. Even if you unplug the printer while you're printing, when you start it back on, you will have an option to resume printing on the screen. And if you select OK, it will continue the print in case of power down, so that's quite nice. I don't like the screen cable, but I do like the screen. For me, using a touchscreen is much easier, faster and also looks nice. As always, the metal frame of the machine makes this printer very strong and that will result into better printing with less vibration or movement errors. All the axes are using some V-shaped smooth rollers, so the axis movement is very smooth. We also have an eccentric nut for each carriage, so we can tie that using the key. The extruder of this printer is the MK10 and it uses a Bowden system and the filament detector is placed right on top of the motor. The nozzle block seems to be good quality and we also have a powerful cooling fan right next to the nozzle. I do like the printing bed. It has a glass surface so we could get very smooth prints but also the build tech material on the other side. Just flip it over and you can select on which surface to print. Ok, so what I like most about these printers is that they are very compact. You don't need any external case on the side. All the electronics and the power supply are below the printer inside of the metal case. In this way the printer will occupy less space. I think they should have done this for all the printers from the beginning. Anyway, the power supply is a 24 volts one, so the heating process is fast enough compared with the 12 volts model, and the nozzle could reach up to 245 degrees pretty fast. The high voltage part is covered with the printer case, and we have a fuse at the input for more safety. So this printer is quite safety to use, since the high voltage is not exposed. Well, I think that's it with the main specs of the AlphaWise U30. All is there to do is to take a look inside of the electronics case. I take out 4 screws and I remove the metal protection case. So nothing special, we can see a pretty decent heatsink for the heated bed MOSFET. The stepper drivers are placed onto the board below these small heatsinks, and it uses an STM32 microcontroller. So that's it for the electronics, so I can close back the case. Ok, so finally let's get back to the print results. I started with the well-known Benchy file with blue PLA filament. This was the first print with this printer and it turned out quite good. If we look on this side we can see some perfect layers. But we can also see some errors around of the door of the Benchy. The rest of the part seems to be ok. It's not perfect, but the print is quite decent, 
especially knowing that this is the first print with this printer. I've also printed a calibration cube with PLA. The bottom layers are bad because the temperature was too high. But then I've lowered the temperature and the rest of the print was okay for such a small part. I've also used some nylon filament. The print turned out okay with no problems. I've made this 3x3 cm square and as you can see the precision is quite good. One side is perfect and a small error for the other side. I've used this bone color ABS and I printed another Benchy file. The result was good enough and knowing that ABS is quite tricky to print. I've used a temperature of 245 degrees for the nozzle and I had to flip the printing surface and add some hairspray so the print will stick to the bed. I've also printed this vase in spiral mode using skin color PATG material. The result is great and all the layers for this print are perfect. I can't say anything bad about this print. Ok so we can print with no problems PLA, also nylon and ABS, PETG and probably flexible as well at lower speeds. I didn't try that material yet. So that's it with the print results. In general I think I had good prints. I'm still a huge fan of the Ender 3. But at the same time, this new model from Alphawise is also a good competition. The price is lower, it has the same printing area, steel metal body, power resume option, a filament detector, the touchscreen control, a 24V power supply, a very compact frame, a double side printing surface and in general all good quality. So right now I'm not sure which one to choose between the Ender 3 and this one. Both printers are great and most important very cheap so everyone could afford to buy one. Well guys that's it for this small review. You have links below if you want to buy this printer or any other low cost printer for 2019. I hope you made a general idea about this printer. If you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember that your help on Patreon means a lot for me and will keep this kind of videos going. So thanks again and see you later guys.